powers of the game, and that includes today's guest of honour, the Right Honourable David Miller, the Secretary of State for National Heritage. The side of Brazil's footballers is enough to set the pulses racing. Throw in a Wembley setting, the sunshine as well, and you have pure theatre. For Gary Lineker, a match of this calibre, an appropriate finale to his career in this country, still chasing the Bobby Charlton record, of course. If he was to equal it today, it would also provide a hat-trick of goals here against Brazil. The 1-1 draw in 1987, the 1-0 win two years ago were both secured by goals from Gary. England reinstates Chris Woods in goal. He's one player short of start against Yugoslavia in Malmo, as long as he's fit. The four defenders, Stevens, Walker, Keown and Dorigo, all retained from the win in Hungary. The system of three centre-backs discarded at half-time in Budapest and not being used, at least at the outset today. Trevor Steven and David Platt both available again after their club commitments. Platt will have to forage forward to help Gary Lineker while Carlton Palmer, Tony Daly and Andy Sinton are all involved in a Wembley International for the first time. And I think that the England players will be delighted that they reverted to a square, a flat back four. I think it suits England better. I think the players are happy with that. I, like Trevor Francis, think though that David Platt will come from deep to ha help Gary Lineker and not start up front. Seven of the Brazilian starting lineup have played here before, and though their plans have been affected by the continuing league programs in Germany and Italy, Genoa have released Branco, Moser, a teammate of Trevor Stevens at Marseille, Ricardo and Valdo have all come from France. The goalkeeper Carlos, 36 years old now, has been involved in three World Cup squads, and the side is captained by Ray, the youngest brother of a past Brazilian star, Socrates. Well, much has been made of the inexperience of this Brazilian side, but if England are going to win today, they have to get through a back four that boasts almost 200 international caps between them. A little bit of history, Carlos Alberto Pereira on the right, the first coach to take on England with three different countries. He did it with Kuwait in 82 and Saudi Arabia in 88, and Fred Street on the left, the England physio, his 200th match doing that job for his country. Great character, a great achievement. The officials all come from Scotland. Jim McCluskey, the referee. Taylor they've only once before taken on South American opposition that was a year ago here a 2-2 draw and this is Carlton Palmer whose uh, early surge there troubled Brazil and undoubtedly however experienced this Brazilian side is they will have a few nerves well that's so worrying Martin sorry because Carlton Palmer hasn't moved since that challenge there I'm sure that Trevor Francis will be having some anxious looks there towards him. But Carlton Palmer, as Trevor knows, is not the type of lad that stays down. And there's a lot of concern around him at the moment. It is a fierce challenge as he goes full-blooded for that. You see, he just catches him just above the ankle there, his left ankle. Looks like he catches him just on the shin. Let's hope it's just a knock. There you see, just in the follow-through there, catches him just above the left ankle. Yes, it was Ricardo who came in to block the shot initially. And that's why Graham Taylor can't be uh, definite at this stage. He's still got the, this match to make sure he doesn't collect an injury or two for his squad. Happily, Palmer, who is a bouncy character, <laughs> has bounced back up again. First game at Wembley at any level. <laughs> it was encouraging start in the way that he got into the position, but a painful start a moment later. There was a, a problem for one of the Brazilians as well, Luis Carlos, for number two. It's a case of start all over again, isn't it? We do with a Tony Dorigo throw. 
Andy Sinton has played here before for the England uh, schoolboys. He said it seems like yesterday at the uh, under-15 level. He's now to uh, take the first corner of the game. Martin Keown joined by Palmer at the near post. Lineker hoping for a flick on. Luis Enrique getting his head to it for Brazil, the number eight. And now Luis Carlos with that almost effortless use of the outside of the right foot. Renato is a surprise recall by Carlos Alberto Pereira, who's only been in charge in this spell since the autumn. He did take on a job <laughs> that is uh, full of chopping and changing. It's a very political position being coach of Brazil. He did have the job in the early 80s, brought a team to uh, play Wales at Ninian Park. Rai, Bebeto, Rai. Here's Valdo for Bebeto. And uh, it's not held by Chris Woods. He did well to get to the shot. And Brazil with the sun on their backs, the ball at their feet, they're dangerous. But so too is Tony Daly. Mauro Silva, the defensive midfield man, filling in behind uh, Valdo there to hold Daly up. Trevor Stevens stepping in. Gary Stevens, flat, and Lineker in the middle. Sinton with the dummy, Lineker with the attempted return pass, and the moment now, Andy Gray to talk about the save from Chris Woods. Well, it was a fine save at the end of a wonderful move from the Brazilians. If this is a little taster of things to come this afternoon, then I think the, the people here and the people at home are in for a right treat. The sunshine, it looks as if the Brazilians feel at home. The sun's on their backs, slicking the ball about what looks like a really good surface at Wembley today. England, on the other hand, will play quicker football, go at them, try to use the likes of Tony Daly and Andy Sinton for more pure thrust at Brazil. Fascinating contest ahead. The Brazilians were somewhat miffed by the Wembley authorities' refusal to allow them the chance to train here for any length of time. Here's Bebeto. Valdo. Rai. Now Luis Carlos. And Palmer, who's fitted in in midfield. I suppose the one question mark against him in his two appearances in the last two games has been the number of free kicks he's given away. Not all of those, having been at both games in Moscow and Budapest, were accurate decisions by the referee. He's got such long legs but he sometimes reaches a, a ball that the officials don't really expect him to reach. Rai. Nearly got through for Renato. Tony Dorigo trying to uh, carry the ball to safety under pressure from Bebeto. Bailey's made a run from right to left. It's Stephen on the ball, and David Platt has run offside. But I think that's the pattern we've seen in, in two attacks there. The Brazilians are going to be patient. They want to slick it about. They want plenty of movement. England will look to play it quickly, look to get people like Tony Daly, David Platt, Andy Sinton, Gary Lineker, all with pace in behind Brazil's back four. Well, certainly David Platt is up alongside Lineker at the moment, although at the kickoff, maybe just to catch the Brazilians out for a moment, he lined up in midfield. But the plan's undoubtedly for Platt to uh, be given free reign to his natural attacking instincts. And at the moment, Andy Sinton has come across to the right of England's midfield, faced by Branco. Bebeto. Nicely played. Across from Luis Carlos, only onto the head of Dorigo. Palmer harassing away at Rai. And he was aiming for the ball then, but I don't think he quite got there. Quick free kick. And Branco, who wants to shoot from anywhere, and it was a marvellous effort. It dipped. It was a very difficult save, and Chris Woods should receive real credit for keeping that out. But that's Branco to a tee. We know about his free kicks. But in free play, 
If you let him loose on the left foot, well, that's a taster again. Twice Woods has had to go to either side to keep Brazil out. It goes behind off Palmer for another corner. Oh, that was a fine save, Martin. You're right. Branco magnificent from anywhere within 35 yards of goal. If he's given a yard, he'll have a dip. Chris Woods pushed it well round the post. Blocked by Platt, but not decisively. Valdo again. And the shot was from Rye under challenge. He's one of six brothers. In fact, Socrates the oldest, Rai the youngest. An amazing family. And it's always a burden wearing that number 10, isn't it? I, I was very keen to see this man's performance today. He's actually started very well. Played one glorious 40-yard pass from inside right to inside left. And he's got involved right from the start. Incidentally, his father must have run out of Greek names by the time he got to Rai. He's got another brother called Sophocles, one <laughs> called Sosthenes. <laughs> Trevor Stephen, Keown, layoff from uh, Palmer, just came behind Stephen, who was pressed by Mauro Silva. Well, there'll be some concern on the England bench, Laurie McMenemy on the left, Alan Ball. But uh, concern is one thing, but anyone who uh, has any feel for the game at all will also uh, want to see more of this from Brazil. How will England cope? The FA have played a part in uh, smoothing out that ruffle over Brazil's inability to be given uh, training facilities here. That was a Wembley decision, I must stress. The FA stepped in and showed proper hospitality yesterday by allowing the Brazilians full use of their own facilities out of Bissam Abbey. Lineker. It's past Carlton. Carlton. Lineker's earned it, and Lineker will surely take it. Well, that's what I said. They would look to get people like Gary Lineker through. Goalkeeper makes no contact with the ball at all. There's not a lot of physical contact, but Gary Lineker gets the ball first. There it is. Goalkeeper just catches him there, and down he goes. And I think Jim McCluskey quite right there. I'm not happy the Brazilians though, not happy at all. We're in the tenth minute of Gary Lineker's last game in England. Are we about to see history in the making? This to be level with Bobby Charlton. At the end where he missed the penalty in the FA Cup final last season. Oh, and he's missed this one. Oh, dear. I find that hard to believe, Martin. I know what he's tried to do, Gary. He's tried to make the keeper dive, and he's tried to chip it. Watch this, he just tried to chip it in the middle of the goal, but he gets nothing behind it. I honestly felt sure he must have been under immense pressure there. There isn't a doubt about that. But I can remember in the World Cup when he was under the same sort of pressure. And he put it down and he hit the back of the ball as hard as he could. And I felt for certain that's what he would have done there. Well, in the World Cup, of course, it was team pressure. England needed him to get those goals. Just now, that was individual pressure. Everyone, including Bobby Charlton, wanting Gary to get his record. Well, his head is still down, and uh, there is still time, of course, for that. Is a miss on this, a blot on this wonderful record. The first time he's missed a penalty for England. I think that just shows you that everyone expects Gary to show, show his no nerves really outwardly. They all think he's such a nice, cool character, and his record certainly suggests that, but that to me suggests that even he is feeling the pressure as he nears this remarkable record of Bobby Charlton's. Yes, he's been a great uh, one-touch finisher from free play when you don't really have time to think, you do it all by instinct. But from the moment 
that he went down then and Jim McCluskey reached for the whistle. <laughs> well, we were all waiting to pay our tributes and we'll have to wait longer. I mean, look at it here. You can see he tries to chip it, but he gets nowhere near enough height on it. Had he executed it the way he wanted, he would have scored. There isn't a doubt about that. And even then it ran behind Carlos tantalizingly. Well, funnily enough, this fixture has a history of penalties missed and saved. The very first time Brazil came here in 1956, England won by four goals to two. And on that day, they missed two penalties. John Attio and Roger Byrne for the culprits there. In 69 in Brazil, Gordon Banks, the great Gordon, saved one from Carlos Alberto, the Brazilian World Cup winning captain of 1970. So it's another one for that list. Stevens with a throw. Palmer, well, he flicked it on, but uh, into the side netting. Carlos Alberto Pereira, it's not the uh, same Carlos Alberto of the 1970 team on the field, although he was part of the uh, delegation then. His assistant now is the boss in 1970, Mario Zagallo, who twice as a player was a World Cup winner with Brazil in 58 and 62. Those memories that all these current Brazilians have to try and cope with. Flat. Palmer, who missed out at Wembley last year with Sheffield Wednesday in the Rambolos final, he was suspended. Luis Carlos, it's just beyond right. Tony Daly coming back. Gary Stevens, who seems to be out of the England picture for so much of the season and has timed his burst to get into the squad. Well, I think he's deserved it. One of the most consistent performers at, at Rangers for, for about the last two years, Martin. And he's deserved his England recall. And although uh, Graham Taylor will not confirm it, I think the feelings are quite clear that the starting 11 here will all go to Sweden. If fit. He wouldn't be drawn on the substitutes today, which has uh, Nigel Martin as the backup goalkeeper for this match. And uh, he's also included as one of his available players from the bench this afternoon, David Rocastle, who's been uh, written out of many experts' lists over the uh, past few days. Well, it's nil-nil. But already there's been a major story here. Gary Lineker has missed the penalty for England. Missed the chance to draw level with Bobby Charlton. Missed the chance for his 49th goal for his country. Well, they've certainly come here looking to entertain Brazil. They haven't come here looking for a nil-nil draw or anything at times. When goalkeeper Callas has got the ball, they're throwing four people right up against the back four of England. Trying to put them under as much pressure as possible. And this is good. This is what... The manager, Graham Taylor, would have wanted. He would have wanted a real test for his side in the last performance at Wembley before the European Championships. And I think he's going to get that today. Ricardo. Valdo. In the way was Trevor Stephen, who also came in from the cold, along with Gary Stevens. They've played together for so long, of course, at Everton and at Rangers and with England. And pressure applied by Rai, who was a late arrival with this Brazilian squad. His club, São Paulo, involved in the Libertadores Cup, the equivalent of the European Cup in South America in a midweek game. Platt. Picked off by Mauro Silva. It's always been the tradition for Brazilian teams to play the number five in front of a back line. Think of Dunga and Alamao in recent sides. It's Mauro Silva today. And of course, as Andy said earlier, the number 10. 
that's only given to a player of uh, immense individual talent since the days of Pelé through the likes of Zico here's Bebeto who's at the crossroads of his international career really Renato forced away by the diligence of Walker Valdo Renato can turn this time Valdo Renato got in the way Branco's there again and Dorigo's got to get there for England which he did with Luis Enrique waiting behind him and Simpson sprinting that's great play from Andy Simpson he's been hurt in the process England take it on with Lineker and now Platt Branco got back still Platt and uh, Ricardo in the end dispossessed him and Jim McCluskey lets the game go on Andy Simpson is back on his feet on the other side Bebeto four up for Brazil Valdo. Mauro Silva. And that's rise past Luis Enrique showing strength to withstand the challenge and then finding that the referees penalised him for that. I think what's happened is he's given offside the lines on the far side. Like one of the Brazilian players, I think that Renato had made a good forward run in behind the England defence. And unfortunately for Brazil, the lines was flagged for offside and they played a good little ball into someone's feet. Moser. Palmer quickly on the scene. Lineker. Trevor Stephen and uh, Black it wide but again the flag is up clever play though from Trevor Stephen wasn't it no way through look at that no way through on the ground so he just lifts it up and unfortunately David Platt just a little bit early with his run David Platt who's shown great ability to get goals in Italy in a struggling side Bari relegated and now David Platt having to deal with daily questioning about which is the next port of call for him in Italy. Certainly Juventus seem to have first option. But that's me saying that and not David Platt. I don't think he'll be losing much sleep though, Martin, do you? About worrying whether his career is going to falter or anything like that. No, he's really done himself a power of good with uh, his work in Italy hasn't always reflected in the way he's played for England this season and I think that's one factor in uh, Graham Taylor's decision to allow him to operate as a striker or as I say a foraging forward who is natural capacity for work will take him back into midfield from time to time but he's playing more with his back to the goal and he's certainly Drawn Moser from time to time in as his marker. So he's lost him at the moment. I mean, he can understand what Graham Taylor's trying to do with him today. But I, but I like Trevor Francis, I would have liked to have seen him pick someone up front with, with Gary Lineker. I think Gary's played with about 11 different partners under Graham Taylor. And as he near a European Championship, it's a very important part of the side. It would be nice if he had a couple of strikers that played well together. Very much like Peter Beasley and Gary did in the World Cup. I think that's what he should be looking for. And, and he's, it looks like he's taking another gamble today, playing David Platt, to have another look. I'm sure he knows what he wants to do, but it just seems, and I think the supporters feel at times, is, you know, where are we? We're not quite there with the side. Does he really know the 11 he wants to pick? Here's Dorigo. Of course, Lineker's always happy, perhaps happiest, when he's uh, up there on his own. There's more space around him. Down goes Sinton with the second positive run that he's made. And that unsettled Luis Enrique. He's actually shown a good appetite so far, Andy Sinton, for this match. He's run at players, and I think that's always worrying. Nobody likes it, no matter what level you play at. People with the ball run straight at you and commit you. So, free kick to England. 0-0 at Wembley. 
coming up to the halfway point in the first half and it is very warm down at pitch level Stephen takes it oh and Platt didn't quite get enough on it for the free kick and by Andy Sinton it's good delivery as well, and it, David Platt does get above Ricardo there, and had it been a couple of inches lower, I'm sure David would have got that one on target. Mara Silva. Franco, who played in every game for Brazil in each of the last two uh, World Cups. In the final stages. I think Chris Woods would be very proud of that earlier save from Branco, who of course scored that wonderful free kick for Genoa against Liverpool. Keo. Daly, if one player can catch it, it's Tony Daly. But Mauro Silva, who's a very strongly built man, his nickname in the Brazilian camp is Wardrobe because his shoulders are that wide <laughs> and he <laughs> used them then the wardrobe got in the way of Tony Daly I think what's noticeable in Tony Daly and I think this will happen as he his international career grows and grows as I'm sure it will do here's Platt Sinton taking on Luis Carlos and only a corner Trevor Francis in particular must be very proud of Andy Sinton because it was Trevor who signed him for Queen's Park Rangers from Brentford put him on the ladder Keown again alongside Palmer Gary Stevens around the penalty spot who's never scored for England oh and Moser took it away from Carlos and then it goes in there won't go behind Luis Carlos clears Daly now Steven it was just caught and it was fortunate for England that he was because Brazil actually might have exposed a lack of numbers in England's defending so many had moved forward from the back at the original corner 25 minutes played oh that was Dorigo trying to take it at full cry from David Platt Scuffed out by Renato Walker. Dorigo's cross. Moser is excellent in the air. And here's right for Luis Enrique. He's got Renato to the right, Bebeto to the left. And Luis Enrico tries to get beyond Walker. Renato. Paul oh, Stevens has missed it. Bebeto has scored. A mistake by Gary Stevens. A goal for Bebeto. England nil, Brazil won. Well, they have been threatening, haven't they? They came here and they started very positively. Brazil, we said they were looking to get forward. It's Rai who causes a problem for Gary Stevens by trying a bicycle kick, missing it. If you watch it here, there's a cross comes over. Rai tries a bicycle kick there. Gary Stevens takes his eye off the ball and there's little Bebeto just smashing it past Chris Woods, giving him no chance. Well, I said earlier, Bebeto, according to Carlos Alberto Pereira, is at the crossroads in his international career. He does look so young, but he's 28 now. He's had plenty of chances with Brazil in the past. He's taken some of them, but he has a reputation as a whinger in the camp. And uh, they're beginning to run out of patience with him, but he's done himself a power of good here. Yeah, but this is not new, this situation to England, is it? In recent internationals, they have tended to go down in them. But what they have showed is an ability to claw their way back into games and never really give them up. Bebeto again. It was Valdo, who's uh, part of the engine room in midfield, looking for Luis Enrique, Lineker. Oh, and it was very nearly slipped into his stride there by Andy Sinton. So Brazil having survived that 
Blemish from Gary Lineker's penalty. Just thinking back to that technique that Gary tried. I think it was first seen by uh, Panenka with Czechoslovakia in the mid 70s in a European Championship. It's more common now. I think you need a lot of nerve to <laughs> execute it, to even try to do it. I actually think Gary's actually scored a goal in the game. I think it might have been against Nottingham Forest this season already when he, when he uh, employed that uh, style of penalty kick. So he's obviously confident enough to have done it, but it just wasn't to be his day today. Pavetto, Walker's speed, seeing off Renato. But as we all, as we all know, Martin, it's the, the fact that Gary Lineker will only need a half chance and they'll make everyone forget about that penalty miss. Luis Enrique. Intercepted by Platt. Here's Valdo. Now Branco. Valdo again. And the corner conceded by Daly. And uh, another angle on the goal. And... Uh, Let's admire the uh, crisp hit in, at the near post by Bebeto. But Gary Stevens wouldn't want to see it too many times. As Andy was saying, there was the distraction with Rai. And uh, when you think Brazilians have produced so many spectacular moments like that, maybe it was a surprise to Stevens that Rai didn't send it whistling into the net. First of all, I bet he wishes now that that's what had happened. Michel Platini is here, of course, looking on in his capacity as coach of France. We're in England's European Championship group. Again, they tried a dummy at the near post. Palmer wasn't buying it. Valdo. Mauro Silva. Renato. Luis Enrique. Well, the tails are up now, aren't they? It's a lovely diagonal run from Luis Enrique. Renato plays a straight little ball into his path. Good forward play that from Brazil. So, Carlos Alberto Pereira, please, the most engaging man whose English is immaculate. And he pushed England in that match in Bilbao when he was in charge of Kuwait in the World Cup of 82. That was only a 1-0 England win. It was a 1-1 draw when he was with Saudi Arabia in 88. Is he going to get a win at the expense of Graham Taylor? Dorigo. England's throw. 14 minutes to go to half time. It's taken by Dorigo. Stuart Pearce, incidentally, is a substitute today. Which is good news given his recovery from an injury that was sustained on this ground in the uh, Zenith final at the end of March. And it's certainly the fitness of Pierce and Barnes that Graham Taylor, I believe, will take into account when he names his party tomorrow and that it won't be a 20. It will have one or two options available for him. Barnes has got a problem with the uh, top of the right thigh, what the uh, pros call the kicking muscle. And oh. He's had a recurrence of that. I think when you're talking about two players that are as important, I feel, to England as those two are, then he's quite right. The manager has got to give people like that as much time as possible to, to make the final party. He really has. And tomorrow was his own self-imposed deadline. It isn't the UEFA deadline. Stevens. 
to Steven. Daly, chance to run away from Branco. Mara Silva again. He's a player we may hear more of, the number five. The Italian scouts are tracking him. He's a particular favourite of Carlos Alberto Pereira's, having uh, come from a club just outside San Paolo, where they were in tandem together. Palmer. Yeah, what he does, he does very, very well, Mark. And as you say, plays in front of the back four, but plays the width of the park, the whole width. If any of his full-backs are in trouble, as was the case with Branco there, you can bet that Mauro Silva will be around. Same if it was Luis Carlos on the other side. He's excellent at going and helping teammates that are in trouble. Palmer. That's a goal kick. You might also remember Mauro Silva because the England players have been pointing out that he's a bit of a ringer for John Barnes. Well, if he's got as much ability as John Barnes, he must be a hell of a player. The Brazilians uh, were wondering whether Barnes would play, of course. He has his place in the legend of the Maracanã Stadium for that uh, splendid solo goal in 1984. Dorigo. Graham Taylor has come down to join Laurie McMenamin. Now Renato. Roberto moving uh, across from left to right to try and make some space, but it was well filled by Stevens first of all. Valdo that held Brazil up. Renato now. And this is Rai. We've got plenty of players in the centre. Stevens did well. Woods couldn't cut out the cross. And Dorigo dealt with Luis Enrico comes back from Rai. Renato. There's a buoyancy about Brazil. Well, that was there even before the goal. And certainly. They have been no making noises in their camp that Brazil have got to get back to uh, their natural flair and uh, not worry too much about the, the functional side of the game. There have been various regimes in the past trying to Europeanize the Brazilian game. Stevens. In for Lineker. Stevens can get it back. Now Palmer. Oh. <laughs> Luis Enrique could have cut it out. It was uh, over optimistic by Tony Daly. Well, that's not what you want Tony Daly in your side for Martin. Spreading 30, 40 yard cross field passes. If he's got the ball at his feet, you want Tony Daly to be running out players. That was a clever ball from Moser. It took out Walker, but he was quickly in when Bebeto slipped. Sinton. Palmer. But it really is excellent entertainment on this baking out afternoon at Wembley. England trying to uh, come from behind. I think what it is, I know, looked around beforehand and there was lots and lots of young supporters in the crowd today and it, it must be great for them to be here and watch a team like Brazil who are so technically gifted try the unexpected, pass the ball around. The, the ball's a friend to them, to use a little phrase, but none of them are frightened of it. They want it, they caress it, they pass it about and these kids should look at that and see what that type of football's all about. You certainly need the sunglasses to get the uh, the best view at it from within the stadium. Valdo. I was lucky enough to be coached by George Cohen, one of the World Cup winners of 66, and he used to say, love the ball. And that's really what the Brazilians do. Branco. Stephen 
Luis Enrique, now Mano Silva just giving them some depth in their midfield play again. Luis Carlos, uh, excellent cross on the run. Luis Enrique, oh, he's got too much time. Renato in the end drives it within the reach of Chris Woods, who's not getting the greatest amount of protection. Well, that's again, it's a wonderful move from Brazil, wasn't it? And a mistake again in the middle of the England defence that almost let in Luis Enrique. Here we see it, I think it's Des Walker that misses this one. I thought he's just going to hit that, but Brazilians want to try something different, don't they? And in the end, I think Chris Woods is happy to see Renato Short trickle into his arms. It's a foul by Branco on Daly. Jim McCluskey wants to talk to Branco because uh, he is left-footed, he wants to tackle with his left foot and in doing uh, that, well, the plus side for Tony Daly to draw from that is to attack Branco on that side on his right foot which he's used mostly for standing on certainly not for tackling and certainly not for shooting Stephen with the free kick Palmer around the back cleared by Moser Baldo now Dorigo good movement from Sinton again just allowed uh, Daly a bit more license on the left and to Luis Carlos cutting him off at the uh, cost of an injury that may be a minor one Bebeto five forward for Brazil Branco with the cross Renato setting it up for Luis Enrique Sinton Here's Platt. Brazil have got back. Threaded through by Stevens. Lineker. Stevens again. It's very well hit. Well, Gary Stevens, who hasn't scored for England, and would feel after the nature of Brazil's goal here that it would have been very timely to have broken his duck. Oh, he so nearly makes up for it, doesn't he? As it comes back to him there, it's there to be hit, and he hits it quite beautifully. Here's an amazing player, Gary Stevens, in terms of uh, the honours that he's won in the game at club level. Six championships in eight years with Everton and with Rangers. He's done the double with Rangers, of course. He's won the FA Cup here with Everton. He's approaching uh, the milestone of 50 caps for England. Right. Come and get it. <laughs> it's like a keep ball session at times, isn't it? But, I mean, that's what you're up against when you play against sides like Brazil. They've got the goal. What they're saying to England players now, if you want to get back in it, you've got to earn the right. You've got to earn the ball back. And you've got to do some running in temperatures that are not advantageous to England, but as Graham Taylor pointed out, when the team arrived today, they might have to uh, face this type of summer heat in Sweden. It's been uh, a pleasure watching Brazil train over the last couple of days because they do do uh, a lot of work with the ball. Just watching Gar uh, Gary Lineker there, Mark, as well. He's screaming at the people to come forward. I mean, one, one or two of his midfield players have got to come into this area and just put them under pressure. You can't allow a team like Brazil time and space like that to pass it about. And they pass it about again with Bebeto and Valdo, Renato. There were two to the right as well. And Steven was trying to play it to the feet of Daly, who was uh, marked tightly by Luis Carlos. Matt trying to force a mistake out of Ricardo. David Platt has one more league game to uh, play for Bari next Sunday. He's been excused duty today. Bari uh, are at home to Inter, but already relegated. 
Daly back to Dorigo. Can England get an equaliser before half time? Stephen. There's no way back to the goalkeeper for Moser. Daly drops for Sinton. Lineker. And the ball was played by Ricardo. Palmer. Now Keown. Stevens. Well, he lofted it in and uh, England got the second ball because it wasn't a great header out. But without uh, an Alan Smith or a Mark Hatley, that wasn't tailored to this particular England team. Daly trying to get a better angle for the cross. We should also add Alan Shearer to that list who's in the party here but hasn't been nominated as a substitute today been one or two questions raised in uh, this morning's papers as to whether Shearer might just miss out that came from uh, Graham Taylor's comments yesterday when he praised Shearer for his season's work whatever the decision about the final squad whether two and two will make four in that respect remains to be seen Stevens the players certainly don't know what the squad will be Platt. It's been a good little spell, though, this last five minutes for England. They actually passed the ball about, they've looked patient, they've been trying to work a little opening, and they've looked very, very comfortable on the ball, and I think that's what they have to do. If they give it away cheaply to Brazil, they'll have to be a long time getting it back. So when they have it, they must try and keep the ball, not give it away cheaply. The free kick given against Keown. I think Martin Keown's uh, adjustment to international football has been sufficiently impressive for Graham Taylor to be able to leave Mark Wright out today. It was explained yesterday as a purely footballing decision. Others might put a different interpretation to that when the Liverpool players decided to parade the cup and not fly off last Sunday with England to Hungary. I think that's always a difficult one, Martin. I mean, as someone who won trophies, etc., I can understand the feeling that was going through Mark Wright and people like Rob Jones who went back and enjoyed the celebration. It is a very, very special day, and if you haven't experienced that as a player or a manager, it really is difficult to understand why many people would want to do that. But I, I, uh, I do understand why I think Mark Wright and Rob Jones wanted to be there and be part of that setup because it is something that they might never ever happen to them again. But they must understand that others will play in their places for England. And Mark Wright doesn't seem to be too unhappy, does it? Maybe he's pleased at the uh, chances Brazil have made. <laughs> Stephen, but he won't get there. They're playing through Maro Silva again. But even Brazil now feeling the effects of the heat. Right on half time. We've had one minute of time added on by Jim McCluskey. Stevens. Now Branco. The friendly nature of the international has uh, clearly allowed the flow of the game, although the Brazilians do have something of a short fuse, and Branco has a good few red cards against his name down the years for his various clubs. He did play here at Wembley for Porto in one of the Makita tournaments, incidentally. Porto from Portugal. But the main talking point of this first half, undoubtedly the uh, penalty miss by Gary Lineker, who stays one goal behind Bobby Charlton, trying to clip it over a goalkeeper he was hoping to commit. And after that, Brazil, who had troubled Chris Woods with their shooting from long range and variable angles, 
They took the lead with Bebeto drilling home the ball after it ran beyond Gary Stevens. And at halftime at Wembley, England are behind. We'll be back for the second half. Next year, I am going to Cancun. What do you want from us? Too graphic for theaters. The Hills Have Eyes. Unrated. Tuesday. You only make beautiful music if you know how to play in an orchestra. Volkswagen GTI, pre-tuned by German engineers. What are you setting your sights on? And when you see it, will you be ready? Learn why the Army is a great place to prepare for your future. You could get enlistment bonuses and help in starting a savings plan today. Plus, get money for college, gain valuable experience, and a firm financial footing for tomorrow. Call 1-800-436-5076 and get this free DVD and boonie hat. Whatever you're looking for, the U.S. Army can help you find it. Target identified. What are you setting your sights on? And when you see it, will you be ready? Learn why the Army is a great place to prepare for your future. You could get up to $40,000 in enlistment bonuses, plus up to $71,000 for education. Gain valuable experience and a firm financial footing for tomorrow. Call 1-800-403-9990 for a free DVD and boonie hat. Whatever you're looking for, the U.S. Army can help you find it. Target identified. As we grow older, one of our greatest challenges is holding on to our independence while still being able to get assistance when we need it. That's why, if you live alone, I recommend Alert USA. With this system, if you're ever in need of assistance, just press the pendant and be connected to an operator who can summon help. With Alert USA, you can remain independent while remaining safe. And although the system is state-of-the-art, it's also affordable. To find out more about Alert USA, call now. And David Rowcastle is given another opportunity to impress him. David's had uh, gastroenteritis, missed the trip to Hungary but really uh, had done his challenge no good at all with uh, an indeterminate performance in Czechoslovakia when he was asked to play as a sort of right back pushing on. Neil Webb, who has been officially credited with the goal in Budapest. And the players who have gone off, Trevor Steven and Andy Sinton. Brazil picked up an injury in the first half to Luis Carlos. You saw him playing that terrific cross in the uh, move that led to the Luis Enrique and Renato chance when Des Walker missed kicks. But Luis Carlos did pick up an injury before that. The substitute for Brazil. It's spelt Charles. It's pronounced Charles. Well, Stuart Pearce would love to have 20 minutes or so. He's made great progress this week. And maybe the tracksuit coming off is just to do with the weather. So Brazil 2 start the second half. They're leading by a goal to nil. The scorer, the number seven, Bebeto.
in England, Andy, with room for improvement. Most certainly, I would think that Graham Taylor would have said so at half-time. He'll be looking for a far more positive performance in the second half, and certainly, as Trevor Francis said, more efforts on target. Brazil playing their sixth game under Carlos Alberto Pereira. And they've won four of the previous five. Their one defeat, their last game at the end of April, away to Uruguay, which is not a match that Brazil traditionally <laughs> like to lose, but like uh, England losing to Scotland, or vice versa. Found by Moser on Platt. The whys and wherefores of Webb's goal in Budapest have uh, been debated thoroughly. As I say, officially, it has been credited to him. The uh, best part of it from Neil Webb's point of view was the way he got into the box, which perhaps since that dreadful Achilles tendon injury playing for England back in 1989, he hasn't been able to do as often as he did before then. Well, someone's got to get into the box now if England are going to... Uh, stop themselves going down to what would be a second defeat under Graham Taylor's management. This is the 20th game. Renato. And he's taken Des Walker with him. In came Luis Henrique beyond Bebeto. Stevens. Here's Ricardo. Mauro Silva has played a major part in keeping England at bay. Protecting the defenders behind him and uh, finding time to support Brazil in midfield. Luis Enrique is also finding space ahead of him. Moser. A straight swap at right back with Charles replacing Luis Carlos. For better. Renato had one season in Italy with Roma. Didn't pull up any trees there. He's always been uh, an exciting and extrovert player in his own country. As uh, you could say the same about David Rocastle, who I think deep down had ruled himself out of uh, the chance of going to Sweden. But Graham Taylor is very good at keeping everyone guessing, including his own players. Daly. And Brazil have been studying, as you would expect, videos of recent England games, so... They know about Daly. Yes, a surprise element that he certainly had when he, he first made his, his debut with England. It will almost definitely have gone by the time England get to European Championships. Someone with his pace. He ain't a surprise for long in football, Martin, honestly. Webb. Now Walker. Well, Lineker's challenge was enough to get the ball back to Webb. Charlotte with the header. Oh, and it's gone straight to David Platt, who's put it in the back of the net. 1-1. One, one. It's his first England goal for a year. And it shot Brazil, who had started the second half, settling into their pattern of passing. But a mistake here by the substitute, Charles. And Platt controlled the shot. What a horrendous error from Charles, as you say. It's a bread and butter clearance she's got here. All he has, he can do anything except that with it. But credit to David Platt. It's coming down from a good height. It's a difficult skill in, in football, the volley. But watch the way he controls it. Hits it down. And that's a great finish. Well, we talked about Neil Webb getting into the box. We knew David Platt would always want to run that. And simply by the willingness to get into those positions, he 
has made himself a potential scorer in every game that he plays. But here come four for Brazil against two for England. Fortunately, it was played wide by Valdo and uh, Rai, who could have been in on goal, had to veer away to the left. Charles. Bebeto. Here's Renato. Well, you wouldn't exactly say that England were good value for their equaliser, but they'll uh, take what's coming and what's, uh, what's arrived, rather. And Graham Taylor, who was grimacing and complaining before, I don't think it's changed his tack too much, but one thing that has paid off for him was uh, the positioning of Platt in his selection. I think David Platt would have been there, Mark, whether he was selected in midfield or up front. That's the kind of areas he does get into, even when he's selected in midfield. So I think he'd have been there regardless of where he was selected. Charles it hasn't been a, a good game for the right backs defensively, has it? Two uh, individual errors leading to the two goals. But it's motivated the players I'm sure it's certainly lifted the crowd who are getting a bit soporific in the sunshine here Luis Enrique and I'm sure will invigorate Brazil again oh Renato there's no offside and Rai with a clear opportunity to restore their lead and was it Gary Stevens who was the saviour then I think it was it's a great move again, they tear England wide open here, but there's Gary Stevens throwing himself in front of it. And certainly more than making up for his error earlier. Well, he was doing what defenders have to do in moments of desperation, defend the goal. Got in front of it and got in the way. It's Branco to take the corner. And it's Webb to head it behind. I'll tell you a little secret about Branco is that when he places the ball for his dead ball situations he likes to have the valve closest to him so he hits the ball at the point where the valve is he believes he can get extra power from doing that it's pretty deep and Woods can only push it out and then claim it it was a very thoughtful corner way beyond the tall England defenders to the smaller man Bebeto to head back across goal And I would expect Aston Villa to practice their free kicks with the uh, the Branco method from now on. <laughs> well, we'll try it. We'll try anything if it helps, Martin. <laughs> Here's Renato. This is Charles. Luis Enrique. Can he reach it? Not quite. Oh, it's a mistake by Keown this time. Right. Valdo is the man on the left. And the man that England left. But not for long. It's a corner. The one thing the goal has done, it's given the, the game a little bit of impetus, hasn't it? There was a great danger if it had gone on that Brazil would have just been content to stroke the ball about. But now, they look like they want to go and score another goal, and that, that certainly lifted the game. Oh, Woods has only knocked it to Bebeto. Just too high for Rai, because the goal was open for him then. Chris Woods was still on his way back. Charles. Here's Renato. He's become more of a force in the second half. And Woods came for the corner and uh, knocked it away from the immediate danger, but straight to uh, Bebeto, who played it back very quickly. Fortunately for England, not with total accuracy. Otherwise, Rai would have made it 2 1 to Brazil. It is 1 1. Bebeto for Brazil, flat for England. Luis Enrique. Oh, there's an offside there, and Brazil have spoiled a rather good position.
Andy, there's been a lot of debate about how England should play defensively, the three centre-backs or the system we're seeing today. What, what stance do you take on that? Well, I actually think that they should be content to play with a back four. I think the players are happy with it. You do understand there are games, I do understand there are games, and uh, for a one-off situation, it might pay to play an extra centre-back. But I think England are happier. The players are. They know the formation very, very well. And I think they'd be much better staying with that. I also think that Mark Wright will, as well as Trevor Francis, he will be in the starting lineup for the first game in the European Championship. I think he's the best that they've got. When England need to break defences down, I think what Mark Wright does, I think he's probably better than Martin Keown at doing that. Martin Keown's as good a defender as you'll get, but I think Mark Wright just is that little bit extra when it comes to actually opening up defences if you're playing against packed ones. Palmer apologising. It was uh, promising for England if the ball could have been played within the reach of David Rowcastle. gone in the second half it's been profitable for England but Brazil have already uh, shown even since the equaliser that they are quite capable of carving out openings again Luis Enrique leaving Parma effortlessly Bebeto up with him well in the end he tried too much but that's an area of the pitch where if it does come off for you then uh, the outcome is a great opportunity to get your name on the score sheet. Luis Sanrique moved clubs in Brazil for very big money domestically, more than a million dollars in a country where the poverty affects most walks of life, including football. Arai. Renato Chalés going inside him. Rye, oh, he's got time to shoot. Knocked away by Woods. England slow to get to Rye. That is lesson one when you play Brazil. Well, thanks to Chris Woods again. Too much space. You can't allow them space like that in the edge of the box. These Brazilians will just hit it from anywhere given the opportunity. Up comes Ricardo, the number four. Moser is already there. And it's deep towards Moser. Renato trotting it out to Bebeto. And Woods once more from Ricardo, repositioned to get to the far post. He was the captain here in 1990, incidentally, the centre-back. But has lost that job recently to Rai. Palmer. Now Dorigo. Charles with the tackle. Charles plays for the famous Rio club Flamengo. Webb who plays for the famous Northwest club Manchester United for the moment. first played for Brazil back in 1975 he's in the World Cup squads of 78 82 and 86 Charles here's Renato Moser, as the two number nines were in conflict, Renato and Platt. Branco. England trying to keep their shape defensively, trying to take some of the life out of Brazil in midfield. Oh, and Moser. Couldn't improvise then. Webb. England was snapping in there. Graham Taylor would have liked that much more. Well, what it does show you, though, if you do put players under pressure, no matter how comfortable they look on the ball, it can make them make mistakes at times. Renato. 
That was Keown doing well against Bebeto. But now Rai. Well, he feinted to shoot, then tried to slide it across for Valdo. Brought out by Rocastle. Now Daly. And body checked by Charles. Out comes the yellow card from Jim McCluskey for the man in the yellow shirt. Yellow shirts, incidentally, I should point this out to you, that Brazil now wear a kit which is manufactured by an English company. It's good for the balance of payments. <laughs> Free kick to England. Taken by De Riga. <laughs> Carlton Palmer thought that was going to be his. Daly. Flat, scrapping away, back for Stevens. Palmer against Branco. Rowcastle. David Rowcastle doing his best to keep England going, and Gary Stevens. Well, the difference at the moment is that England are able to make more challenges and make them further upfield, even this far upfield. Webb with the cross onto the head of Maro Silva. Renato, he made that look so easy. <laughs> A silky turn, a pass for Luis Enrique. Gary Stevens using his speed to get back. Renato's in the middle. Luis Enrique. And once more, England owe oh, a debt to Woods. Well, that move just showing that they, when they want to inject some pace into the game, they can. Two passes, they're in at the heart of the England defence. And once again, they've got to thank Chris Woods for a fine save. Valdo taking the corner. It was Des Walker who knocked it away. Back from Branco. Oh, Renato. There was no flag. All the juggling hasn't produced a shot until it came from Pepeto. And that was not Brazilian in character, although it was in execution. Well, this is the first save, and it's Enrique who gets wide there. Not a doubt, he's going to take Gary Stevens on, takes him on, fires in a shot. Low down to the keeper's feet, very difficult. Well, Brazil, who had this wonderful generation of players, and Bebeto Woods came. There's no one in the centre to help Bebeto out. Keown does all that he can, really, in the circumstances. If he was told, he had time to bring the ball down, but... England weren't really composed enough to help Martin Keown then. I suppose if the manager is looking for a reason to play three centre-backs, just thinking since the second half began, the amount of times that Brazil have got right through the centre of the England defence would certainly be worrying to the manager. Well, at times here, you can feel that you were looking at the, uh, the Brazilians of bygone days. They played that well in patches. Franco's natural bend with the left foot in towards the goalkeeper. <laughs> Brazil, who won the World Cup, 58, 62 and 70, set standards that really haven't been matched since then for applying winning philosophies with uh, all the very best ball skills. They've uh, been amongst the favourites in the last five competitions, but fallen favourites each time. Webb. Charles doing rather better with that defensive header than he did when he teed up David Platt. Keown. Now Daly. 
There he goes, giving him an angle outside. Palmer. Rocastle off goes Stevens. England trying to stretch Brazil here. Showing uh, plenty of patience. Now they're looking to show some penetration. Moses head on, it came just behind Lineker, in goes Webb. In the end, a little surprised, I think, that the ball uh, rolled out to him. Just for a second, as you watch this, as Mosier knocks it down, Gary Lineker's almost in there. We've had 20 minutes of the second half. England won, Brazil won. Daly. That's a free kick. Against Ricardo. Carlos Alberto Pereira is going to take off Valdo. But he hasn't got his attention yet. The number 19 is Paolo Sergio, who's a 22-year-old from the uh, San Paolo club, Corinthians, a club with origins in England. He has scored for Brazil already in his short international career. That was last month against Finland. But it's England who are looking to score here. Webb's free kick. Dorigo. Moser able to go across and deal with that quite easily. Renato in a race with Rocastle and the Arsenal man is in charge. Dorigo. Now Pat. Oh, and Brazil are in a mess now. It was Palmer's run that caused it initially. Lineker catching him up very quickly and then catching it in the face. The ball that was. Well, it is Brazil old at times, isn't it? So breathtaking when they have the ball, but defensively at times, just looking all over the place. And Gary Lineker again, very, very close. In 1990, of course, they went out to Argentina, having controlled much of the game and not scored. And then Claudio Canicchia managed to uh, cash in on some slack defending. And that really was a sensation in South America. Terry Lineker has one more friendly game if selected. England play Finland, of course, before the European Championship starts in Finland on June the 3rd. You'll see that again live on Sky Sports. Carlos Pereira takes his squad back to the airport straight after this game. And they fly to Italy for a friendly next week against Milan. Silva. Branco. It's a throw to Brazil. Yeah, they've definitely been told England players to put more pressure on Brazil when they get the ball deep. They're not allowing them the time and the space that they had in the first half. The one thing about the Brazilians you can be sure is it doesn't matter. They'll still look to pass it and move. They're used to having people right behind them, putting them under pressure all the time. And they will feel the Brazilians that they can still win this they've only done that at Wembley back in 1981 when Zico scored in a 1-0 success Bebeto here's Charles Paolo Sergio oh, 
Kalinica up on his own. He won't worry about that. He's already... Uh, oh, he's pulled Ricardo first, says the referee. And the backdrop to that incident was a couple more England substitutes getting ready. Paul Merson and Stuart Pearce. This is right. Oh, Kian wanting <laughs> to avoid having to take another touch, and that was the right thing to do. Yeah, good play. It's always difficult. And many times you see people, goalkeepers and defenders, get into a mess. And Chris Wood's applauding him there, and quite rightly. Oh, there's a bit of wrestling going on off the ball <laughs> between Branco and Platt. I'm sure David Platt used to that. Two Italian-based players accepting that sort of thing going on. No complaints at all from Platt. Branco had his arms around his neck. And uh, a little conversation in Italian, perhaps. This is Paolo Sergio, just on. The game very spread at the moment. Heat will be partly responsible for that. Dorigo guiding it back very comfortably. Surely Tony Dorigo will go off if Pierce is brought on. Palmer. Lineker. Now Dorigo. Platt in the centre. Lineker's there. And Moser in the right place for Brazil. Rowcastle. Stevens, whose athleticism will help him in this heat. It's over Webb, Platt. And the goalkeeper wanted to get it, but Ricardo decided the safest thing to do was to just boot it out of play. And that eighth thing. Here's Dorigo, who's about to come off, along with Tony Daly, I think. Daly's still centre stage. And uh, it's a free kick to Brazil, and the changes will be made. Up go the boards, three and seven. Paul Merson, number 16, and Stuart Pearce whose knee injury here at the end of March, what, seven weeks ago now, threatened his appearance in the European Championships. Remember, he missed out four years ago with injury in Germany. And he comes on now to a terrific reception against the country that he made his debut for England here against in the late 80s when there were question marks about Pierce. Was he, did he have the temperament to play international football? He got booked within minutes but he's uh, very important to England nowadays Merson has still got to, to prove his importance but the potential is clearly there Luis Enrique is uh, off the pitch at the moment. Right. Paolo Sergio getting uh, the ball back for Brazil. And uh, a foul by Rocastle. And uh, it's getting serious now for Branco. It's only a couple of weeks ago that Branco got himself sent off. In a game for Genoa. Genoa, incidentally, have really fallen apart at the uh, end of the season, in which they got to the semi-finals of the UEFA Cup. Uh, there's a change for Brazil. This is Valdeia. Not to be confused with Valdo. He's a very quick attacker, nicknamed Flash for his speed. And he gets his first touch of the ball from Branco's free kick. Paolo Sergio. Well, we know, given the chance, they don't worry about angles like that, the Brazilians, when it comes to shooting. Woods, very alert. And here goes Pierce. With his fan club behind him. 
Palmer to uh, Platt and now Webb. Gary Stevens, who was supporting willingly on the right, but not really given a great opportunity to continue the move. But a partner for Lineker seems a wrong description for Platt, doesn't it? He's doing his own thing. He's playing up when necessary, coming back into midfield. Yes, yeah, very much so. It's certainly not two players who are working in tandem with each other. As, as what we're used to seeing in Britain is a, is a pair of strikers working up, playing off each other, working with each other. Certainly that description doesn't apply to the David Platt, Gary, Gary Lineker duo. They are two individuals, and I suppose you could say that, that certainly could work at the national level. It makes it more difficult for people to mark players then. In international football as a forward, you've certainly got to be able to look after yourself and work on your own. I suppose that applies in, in most positions, particularly up front, though, when you get isolated. Here is the uh, quick Valdeir. It breaks for Paolo Sergio. Des Walker knocks it away. He couldn't get past the first man with the cross. Platt. Charles with the tackle. Franco showing he can use his right foot. Five forward for Brazil. Roberto, their goal scorer after 25 minutes. And Chris Woods. And but for him, I think this game might have been beyond England's redress. Instead, at 1-1, they're feeling that they could still win it. Merson. The only surprise in his performance is that he's actually let one goal go in. He's looked quite commanding today. Oh, uh, flat goes down. Mose points an accusing finger, saying that was designed to try and fool the referee, which it didn't. Paulo Sergio just putting it off for Charles. And Brazil, incisive again. Woods actually uh, seems slightly out of position then. Moving across to his left, the right as we look. The shot caught him on the move, and, uh, well, if it was a slight error of angles, he's uh, earned the right to make that and to get away with it. He has looked like England's number one, number one. Branco, just wedging it. A golfer would have been proud of that. <laughs> Dropped it right by the pin in the shape of Renato. There is a fatigue creeping into it now. But not for Merce. This return by Stuart Pearce shows again what an amazing man he is. At the start of the week, the uh, diagnosis wasn't at all encouraging. And he said to Graham Taylor yesterday, uh, having done all that was asked of him in training, I think I could do 20 minutes. And here he is, being given the chance by the manager. Now it's a throw to England. But one thing, uh, well, here's a player you may well remember. Might not recognize because the hair's a bit grayer now than it was. Renato goes off, and on comes Junior. Just six weeks or so before his 38th birthday. He's uh, been playing for Flamengo, having spent five years in Italy. And he comes on to help defend at a corner. Junior, who was in the Brazilian winning side on this ground in 1981. Webb with the corner. Charles with the header. Webb, that's a fine ball. Rocastle was Platt sweeping it back in. Now Valdeir, who uh, could well worry England in these uh, closing stages if they can get the ball to him in the right area. 11 minutes left. One thing Stuart Pearce has got to prove to Graham Taylor before he's confirmed in the squad is that he can play a full 90 minutes. And there are plans to link him up with Leicester City next week who, of course, are in the playoffs and doing serious training. They'd love to have him playing in the playoffs. 
<laughs> you bet they would. Walker. Here's Webb. Pierce through to Merson, who showed the same flexibility on the turn then that we've been admiring in the Brazilians. Mauro Silva. He's so strong. Now, is he going to be sophisticated here? Well, he tried to be, and there was an easier ball on wide to the left. That would have been a killer ball had it gone through. Platt. Screening it well from Mauro Silva. Only Lineker ahead of him. Palmer, who's looking now uh, settled in that midfield workhorse role. Webb. <laughs> oh, Martin Keown playing piggyback <laughs> with Branco. <laughs> Uh, 2.30 <laughs> at Leicester, on you go, son. <laughs> well, it is a free kick in Keown's favour, and uh, the scorer of that uh, stunning goal in Czechoslovakia is uh, lurking on the edge as Webb takes it. Pierce, flat. It still could go either way. Junior. Now... This is Valdeir. He plays the straightforward ball this time to uh, Paolo Sergio. Bebeto. Well, it's on target once more. Not the most difficult save that Woods has had to make. Pierce. It's Platt through the middle. Webb trying to get it back there quickly again. England have been more in touch in the second half. Oh, definitely. I think you're quite right there. But what, the, what it has done, what they've had to do, they really have had a strenuous workout. Brazil have made them work very, very hard to win the ball. This is right. Bebeto's offside. That's no goal. It must have been a very close call. Oh, that's very, very close, that. And I think Chris Woods has played so well, perhaps he deserves a little bit of luck there. It's one of those touch and go, and I think the new rule that says if you're level, you're on side, might well have been interpreted then. But England get the bit of luck. And it was Rye who uh, set it up. And Palmer, who was straining and has got this great engine to uh, move around the pitch, but he just couldn't prevent the pass being slipped through to uh, Bebeto. What he did do, perhaps, was delay it, and maybe that delay led to the offside. Junior, who uh, has been the subject of a vigorous press campaign in Brazil to get him back into the squad. They must be uh, sentimental there. Bebeto. This is Valdeir. Oh, brilliantly done. Chalice. Well, the player who was responsible for David Platt's equaliser could have buried that misfortune. But again, isn't it Brazilian magic? Look at that. What does Marquion think he's doing? It's certainly not that. Cheeky back heel. Charles comes in. Blasts it over the top. Well, Valdeir is one to uh, note for the future. Comes from the Botafogo club. He has been involved either as a starter or as a sub in all the uh, six internationals under the control of Carlos Alberto Pereira. So more than 53,000 here. 
attracted by Brazil, attracted by uh, what has been promoted by Wembley as a carnival occasion, but it's been more than that. The sunshine has given that impression, but the football match has stretched England, and in the circumstances, we're not asking them to peak today, remember. We're asking them to peak in the middle of June in Sweden against mostly uh, northern European opposition. I think that's totally right. I think what Graham Taylor's using these games for, quite rightly, he's setting himself some questions. He's asking his players some questions, and every game, I'm sure he's getting more and more answers. And he'll finally, hopefully, get it absolutely bang on right first time they play in the European Championships. That's what that man's aiming for. He won't win anything by winning today's game, but he might win the European Championship learning something from today's game. There is one award for today from the... Uh, sponsors American Airlines and in true American way they're looking for the most valuable player as they say in the States man of the match we might call it here Mauro Silva the most valuable player could easily be David Platt if that transfer fee <laughs> that is talked about possibly between Juventus and Bari talking around uh, eight million pounds he'd be uh, in with a shout for an award today. He's done well for England. Yeah, I think an English point, no, I think there's one man that would be, probably be heading shoulders above them all today, and that would be the goalkeeper. I think he's played sure. exceptionally well. Branco. Paolo Sergio. Pierce has Lineker got something special to offer on uh, his final day well at the moment he's nothing to offer at all because he's down stunned there's a nasty clash of heads here I think that's what both happens they both go up there and then you see it just there with Ricardo just clashing of heads Referee quite rightly stopping the game as soon as he can. Cross on the run from Pierce, showing that he's in the groove again quickly. I think if there's one thing that uh, Graham Taylor might have been looking for today, it would, it would have been Andy Sinzer and Tony Daly, two natural wide players. I on a personal note, don't think you can go into a major European Championship and hope to win it by playing two wide men like that, Martin. I think he was trying that today. I don't think it, it particularly worked for him. And I would be surprised if that's something that he, he looks to utilise other than in an emergency when he has to rescue a game, perhaps in the European Championships. I'd be surprised because into that, starting games with two natural wingers. Well, if he plays with three centre-backs, the width will come from whoever plays wide in midfield. One assumes that will be Pierce if fit on the left-hand side. And I think it's still a little bit up for grabs on the right with Gary Stevens, maybe even still Lee Dixon, who's still with the party. We tend to forget about him. He played in every qualifying game for England, certainly didn't let his country down there. David Rocastle wasn't too convincing doing that job in Czechoslovakia. There's Trevor Stephen, of course, who's played out there before. So... Uh, what Graham Taylor has tried to do is show the versatility and flexibility in these matches. And you must say that although at times in some of the games England haven't been the dominant force, he has achieved that degree of flexibility. Well, he's got the most important thing you need in football, and that is results. And no one can argue with that. down to the final minute
Junior. There's Walker, who uh, was handed the captaincy, incidentally, when Lineker came off in Budapest. It's a tribute to his work for his country. There's more to come. All England fans want more of the same from Des when the battle really commences in Sweden. Well, Brazil will go away from here feeling they could have won the game, but unless they show a little bit more initiative now in the uh, closing seconds they will have to be content with a draw which will certainly please i think carlos alberto pereira who's very much judged on results as the coach of brazil even more so than graham taylor if that's possible yeah, well they've certainly settled for that now haven't they but to be fair to brazil they've been extremely entertaining this afternoon they've been positive in almost everything they've done and this last minute or so has been the first real negative piece of play that they've put together, and, and that's, that's credit to them. And now, they're being positive again. Palmer doing what he's in there for, getting the ball back for England. Lineker for Webb. Charles just giving Pierce a chance to fight for it. And fight for it, he always will, fully fit or not. That's beyond Gary Lineker. No presence from Carlos for the England captain. Jim McCluskey just looking across to his linesman. Lauren McMenemy probably shouting that the game's over to all intents and purposes. Junior. He certainly played until he's a senior. Valdir. Now Bebeto. Maybe one last worry for England. Right. Paolo Sergio. And, oh, that could have looped off Des Walker. Memories of the cup final of 1991 again, having had it with the Lineker penalty miss. The Walker own goal. Well, I said that they settled for a draw, but they obviously hadn't, had they? They had one more attack in the locker. And oh, so nearly opened England up again. Here is Walker. Lineker, last contact with the ball. In England, is it? It may well have been. Here's Maro Silva. Well reclaimed by Webb. A flick from Platt, but no one in close attendance. The game spread out again. Not so much tactically, but by weariness now. I think that's right. I think wherever the heat is around, it's even worse down there. Gary Lineker signs off at Wembley by failing to convert a penalty early in the game, but by helping England to a draw against Brazil. He leaves football in England with all our best wishes for his final fling in international football in Finland and then in Sweden. And he goes with all our gratitude for his truly great ability to score goals. If you owe $5,000 or more on your credit cards, 800 credit card debt can help you quickly reduce or even eliminate your debt. Whether you have good or bad credit, there are many great options available to help you. Hi, I'm Todd Cook for 800 credit card debt. If this is your $5,000 credit card debt and you're making only the minimum payments, it could cost you thousands of dollars in interest and take you many years to pay off your debt. But by calling 800 credit card debt now, we'll help you eliminate fees and penalties, reduce your interest rates, lower your monthly payments, or even eliminate your debts completely. Credit card companies used to hound me. Thanks to 1-800-CREDIT-CARD-DEBT, I lowered my debt, my interest rates, and my monthly payments.
Over the years, we've helped thousands of people reduce their credit card debt fast. Don't be embarrassed or ashamed. We've all been there. We understand and can help you. Call now and put that money back where it belongs, in your pocket. Call 1-800-587-4216 to see how fast you can get out of debt. You're pretty. Waiting long? Yeah, and I'm late. No car, huh? Uh-uh. Bad credit. Uh, I got a car. Hey, I can't get financing. Sure you can. It's easy. Just call 1-800-BAR-9. If you need car financing, even if you have bad credit, 1-800-BAR-9 could get you approved in minutes. 1-800-BAR-9? You can? I am? Really? Scintillating. Need a car? Call 1-800-BAR-9. Everyone deserves a second chance. Bar none. Call now. When it comes to going bald, you now have a choice. Advances in medical science have resulted in the world's first and only permanent solution to hair loss. It is your real hair. It's your natural hair. You wash it, you cut it, you swim with it. Bosley is the world's most experienced hair restoration experts, having pioneered virtually every major advancement in the art and science of hair restoration. I'm very, uh, very satisfied, very happy with what I've done. This has got to be one of the best decisions I've made in my life, I'll tell you that. Bosley Hair Restoration is a relatively simple outpatient procedure. The results look completely natural, and it's affordable on nearly any budget. Call the toll-free number now to receive your free no-obligation information kit that will help you decide if hair restoration at Bosley is right for you. You don't have to accept going bald. Do something about it right now. Call 1-800-331-0718. That's 1-800-331-0718. Call now. Photographers gather around Lineker and the crowd will cheer him off. He could have wished for a happier farewell, but so many great memories. Tomorrow, Graham Taylor will make public his thoughts on which players go to the European Championships. Well, he will be pleased with, I'm sure, the work of Chris Woods, undoubtedly England's man of the match. But for him, we could have lost here to Brazil.